All right, you lot, hope you're doing all right. So a couple of months ago, me and Tia headed out to a local abandoned mill and did this photo shoot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some sort of... If you've not seen it yet, I'll leave a link down in the description so you can go and check it out. A few people asked about, you know, how these images were edited. Seeing as I've got a bit more time on my hands, I've finally got round to making this video. It's the first walk along editing video I've done. So uh, take it easy on me. Right, okay, so here we go. So we've got our, we've got the edit, the image on the left hand side there is, is what we're gonna try and get to. And on the right hand side here, obviously, we've got the, the original unedited image. So, okay, so going through step by step. So just some basic corrections. So as you start off bringing the highlights down, just trying to balance the image out a little bit. Push the shadows up a bit. Then bring those blacks down a little bit. Sometimes pushing the shadows too much, just sort of flattens things out a bit too much. And then I like to, always a bit careful with clarity, but bump that up to about 25 or so. And if we make, you've probably seen people do this before, you know, make make some points on there. We're just gonna do like a little, little S curve. So just bring some of those shadows down a bit. Crush the blacks a bit there, just to give it that cool kind of sort of faded black look. Drop the whites down. So we've got a little subtle S curve in there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go straight down to calibration, which is where the main crux of, of this edit that I've got going on it's basically, most of it is done with calibration and then split toning. So basically with calibration, you can do kind of like a really crude orange and teal kind of look. If you've not heard of orange and teal looks, have a quick Google, look around on YouTube, you'll find loads of videos about it. But basically, if you pretty much drop the red primary slider completely down there, and the blue, sorry, the blue primary slider back this way, it's kind of gonna get rid of a lot of colors in the image. It's gonna kind of bring you down to almost, you know, like a, like I say, a couple of, a couple of tones, or, orange and teal, which at the minute looks pretty garish, looks pretty awful because it's way too orange. We've lost all the sort of detail, the red in the jumper, the red in Tia's lips there. She's gonna go a bit like an Oompa Loompa, but we're gonna fix that, we're gonna fix that, we're gonna sort it out. So if you come up to split toning, what we're gonna do is add, I usually just use these default colors in the, in the selector there. So if you click on that little swatch there, you usually use this end blue color there. So we're gonna put some blues into the highlights. We're also going to put that same colour blues into the shadows as well. And you know, I mean, you know, you can always. What I always like to do is just, you know, go a bit crazy with these sliders, so you you'll get an idea of what of what it's doing. Um, but yeah, we're going to bring that up to there. Saturation on the highlights, I'm just looking at the sky and the highlights and stuff there of the images. So we're looking a bit better there, we're looking a bit better, but like I say, the big problem with doing this, the calibration thing, is that you're losing, or you're kind of, you're making the whole of it, all of Tia's lips and everything orange. So we're gonna fix that, there's a little fix for that. So we're gonna go up to the hue sliders in the the hsl sliders and bring the red hue all the way down here and you'll start to see the reds going back sort of where where they should be there like in tears jumper in tears lips there 
And while we're in these HSL sliders, we're gonna to go to saturation and bring down, just looking at the skin tones here, they, they look a bit too, bit too bright, too orange. So let's just bring the saturate, just until it starts to sort of look natural, just bring the saturation slider down there on the orange, which obviously is where all the skin tones lie. So already, we're getting pretty close now. If we quickly flick backwards and forwards, we're getting pretty close. So the only other thing I can see here is, I think in the blues, we need to desaturate those blues a little bit. And also the hue you can see over here is ever so slightly more tearly colored in the original edit there. So with the blues, if we go over to the hue section on the HSL sliders and just start slowly bringing that blue slider down and you'll see it's just gonna start to inject a bit more of a teal color into those blues. So yeah, we're kind of, we're looking pretty close there. I can just see that the, the red still are more saturated on this original edit. I mean, I'm no, I'm not, I know I'm not gonna get it exact to, to what I originally edited, but yeah, those reds. So I think if we go back to the saturation, I think if we start to bring up saturation on the red a little bit, and maybe even the luminance a little bit, just actually start again, like, you know, go a bit crazy with these sliders and you, you, you can start to see what's actually happening there, how it's affecting the image. But if we bring those up a little bit, there we go. Yeah, so we're getting pretty close. We're getting pretty close. So going up to, um, let's go back up to our basic corrections. And if we zoom in here on Tia's face, obviously, so I did this before, you know, I, I went round and sort of, you know, brushed in, smoothed out all the skin and everything. Because this is the only issue with, as much as I love adding a bit of clarity in, is that, especially on a female portrait, it's not exactly flattering because any sort of little blemishes and bits and pieces like that, it's actually gonna highlight. So what I like to do is if we go, if we get a brush here and, wrong button, let's, start, let's make that brush a bit bigger. We're going to start brushing over the skin here. And what I like to do is a nice new little trick that I've learned. If you bring the texture slider like almost all the way down and then bring the clarity slider down as well, it's going to instantly start to smooth out all, all the blemishes in the skin there. We can make that a bit smaller. So obviously, and then so we just start brushing around all the skin areas, avoiding the eyes and the lips, everything else we can go over. Because we want to keep a bit of definition there. And instantly you'll see you start to get pretty decent results there. But yeah, cool, pretty happy with that. Okay, so we're gonna add, let's go down again, vignettes. I never like to go too crazy with vignettes, but. Let's just add a little one there, just to bring a bit more focus to the subject there. But yeah, so if we flick backwards and forwards there, I think we're pretty much there. Yeah, pretty happy with that. So what you can do now as well, I've got another image here that I that I took that day. Um, but we can copy all of the settings. Maybe actually apart from the spot removal there, I'm just gonna uncheck spot removal. We can copy all those settings and cause, you know, obviously on that shoot, we, um, you know, all the images I want to follow the same kind of edit. So if we just, hold on, let's just change the reference image here. And let's go, so here we go. So we've got an edited image on the left-hand side again here and the unedited version on the right. So because obviously all these images were all part of the same kind of collection, they was all, you know, from the, the same day, 
same kind of lighting, same kind of settings. What I've just done there is copied all the settings from that first edit we've just done. And it's never gonna it's never gonna work all the time, but obviously, you know, Lightroom's great for this. You can you can sync the settings so you can paste it then across all the images you took that day, and it's gonna give you your kind of base edit then for all of those images, which you can then just go through and fine-tune a little bit. So for instance, on this image, if we paste the settings from that previous image, I know we're gonna have that weird um, it's gonna have pasted the area that we, you know, we where we adjusted the skin tones and stuff. So I'll tell you what, let's just Let's just erase that quickly and we're gonna let's brush that in again. Make this a bit smaller. So those same settings that we did before, you know, where we've just reduced the clarity and the texture just to smooth out those skin tones. I'm just gonna sort of brush that, brush that over so it's suitable for this image. Might have just gone over an eyeball there. Let's just erase that just in case. Okay, hit done. And so there you go. I can see already that vignette is a little bit too strong for this image. So we can reduce that a bit. And it looks again like those oranges need to come down even more so let's desaturate the oranges there we go just until we get that nice skin tone again but yeah so we're getting so if we flick backwards and forwards again so you've got you've got Tia standing out much more so now from the background because we've kind of injected those blues and teals into everything around the skin tones it then makes her, I hate using the term pop, it makes her face pop out a bit more because she's, you know, the skin tone is in contrast to the other blue tone. So if you look before, you know, her skin tones are a similar sort of hue. A lot of this stuff around her, you know, is quite sort of warm coloured. But where we've cooled all that off, it then makes the, the skin tone stand out a lot better. Um, so yeah, again, so there you go. I mean, we're pretty, we're pretty bang on there with that previous edit. But you can go in and, you know, I'm not saying that the way that I'm doing things is, is 100% right, there's, there's there's no real right or wrong answer or anything, you know. Um, I just thought this edit looked, you know, it, it looked pretty cool. Um, but you can fiddle around with these, you know. So just for instance, going into the split toning, where we've got that blue color in the highlights, you know, you can start to sort of mess around a little bit. You know, for instance, you can, you know, if you start just pushing this down slightly towards more into the greens, you're going to start getting a slightly, you know, different sort of cool urban kind of looking, you know, a bit like sort of like the Matrix movie, that's quite extreme, but, you know, those those kind of cool urban-y green colours in there as well. Um, so, yeah, you can, you know, you can sort of mess around with this. Obviously, certain colours are going to look, are going to look pretty whaff. Um, but hopefully that will all give you like, you know, the, the basics again of, of that particular edit. And then by all means, you know, you can go through there and just start sort of playing around, tweaking and stuff, you know. But I found that that, that edit seems to work pretty well for a lot of the photos I'm taking lately. Um, so yeah, hopefully it will help you guys as well. So yeah, uh, give this video a, a thumbs up and a like. That's the same thing. So yeah, hopefully that has helped you guys out in some way. If it has, please think about liking and subscribing. And I plan on doing another one of these videos soon. I've done a recent shoot where I sort of messed around a bit more with a black and orange edit. If you look at the recent photo shoot we did where Tia had like a BMX and a skateboard and stuff, they came out looking quite cool there with this, like I say, the sort of black and orange edit. So I'll try and do a video on that as well pretty soon. Um, so yeah, I'll see you again in the next one and uh, catch you later.